Boat Catch 23 out of Florida brought someone in who might be considered this tournament's other big catch. Michael Jordan. They've actually used this robotic navigation system on two patients so far. To give kids a place to play, a city in the east. Is I'm going to turn around the camera here to show you how many people actually came and showed up. As we started driving down the coast, we did notice a little more debris, sand on the road. Now that the sun has kind of started rising and the skies are a little bit brighter, we wanted to come out and show you guys the wind direction and how it's changing. Over here in this wet sand, I'm back at that trailer park in Emerald Island aisle where that tornado did touch down. You can see behind me all of that damage. I get to try one of the first burgers they've cooked off their new grill. As you can see, my buddy behind me here is reminding people to wear a mask. There are people probably going to set up for a beach day. There's actually a couple right here that I'm looking at that are taking a stroll right now. And the governor's church restrictions are getting pushback from North Carolina sheriffs. Some say they will not enforce any limits on church services. Nine of your signs, Kayla Schmidt continues our team coverage live in New Bern. Kayla, what advice does the Craven County Sheriff have for churchgoers? Ken, Shayla, Sheriff Chip Hughes says if churches want to hold indoor service to do so smartly, he says his office is committed to defending their constitutional right. Sheriff Hughes issued a statement yesterday in response to people concerned about not being able to go inside churches to worship. The sheriff says he does not have the resources to go around and take head counts at churches, and that's not something he wants his deputies to do. He trusts the church community of Craven County to worship safely indoors. He says if big box stores can operate, so should places of worship. There's a number of things that can be done to help our protected churches. They want to go there and be able to assemble peacefully and worship. And for that, I support them. Sheriff Hughes says weather is another factor. He says people should be able to go inside for worship when storms hit. The sheriff also wants people to know that this does not mean to go crowd at churches. He said people should still practice social distancing, wear masks, and wash their hands frequently. He says his deputies will respond to complaints, but not check in at churches. Live in New Bern, I'm Kayla Schmidt, 9 on your side. Rose Hill, North Carolina, known for the world's largest frying pan, but also home to a gem full of history and sweetness, Duplin Winery. A long, long time ago, uh, we had nothing but family members here, all working and greeting people and all working together. And, um, you know, everybody who walked in the door was treated like family. Today, that same Southern hospitality can be felt as you enter its doors. Well, you'll, you'll find a bunch of appreciative business people that uh, are grateful for the business and grateful for their support. Our family atmosphere makes us a destination. But that's not all. Duplin Winery is more than just a place to pick up a bottle of muscadine grapes. Since 1975, they have turned their family history into much more. They always have something fresh, something new, um, along with the old favorites. We enjoyed a wine tasting, and the restaurant is, you know, really good as well, the bistro. The family winery offers socially distant wine tasting where you can take a seat and try one of the many native North Carolina wines with a side of homemade crackers and a wine connoisseur to guide you through the flavors. I mean, everybody's friendly and helpful and, you know, always in a good mood. <laughs> and it's not just wine. It's a whole experience. We have a great uh, bistro, which makes some great fried pickles, which is a great southern delight. A shrimp po' boy is really good. And my husband tried the clam chowder and he said it was excellent. The winery also offers tours. They are currently unavailable right now due to COVID-19, but an attraction to check out once it's back. If you've never tried Duplin, you really don't know what the best sweet wine in the world tastes like. And if you get the chance to come in our door, we're going to let you have some. Whether you want to taste test, pick up a local treasure, or try some southern cooking, life is sweeter at Duplin Winery. For Destination Vacation, I'm Kayla Schmidt. 
It's been nearly three weeks since East Carolina University held its first virtual graduation. And of course, many graduates from the class of 2020 were home with their families instead of walking across the stage to get their degrees. Now to your side's Kayla Schmidt followed one pirate's journey through this virtual milestone. She joins us now from our Jacksonville Bureau with more on his experience. Ken, Shayla, I have the honor of telling this story. As a fellow pirate and ECU grad, I knew Rockford Rec as a student. His perseverance with the pandemic hitting at the end of his senior year is inspirational. So here is his story. Since you didn't get the formal graduation, do you feel like a graduate? In 2016, Rockford Rec packed up his childhood room in Cary, North Carolina, and went east to begin his freshman year of college at ECU. I had the dream of, you know, there's that day where I'm going to walk across the stage, my whole family's going to be there, I'm going to throw, you know, my cap up in the air, you know, the fantasy of it all. Four years later, Rec expected to do just that. We need to understand what is a coronavirus. All of our lives will change in some way over the next few weeks and months. Simply put, we've had to face the reality that spring graduation ceremonies will be disrupted. But he didn't. He couldn't, and neither could the graduating college classes across the nation. Seeing all of this happening was just a big um, burst of the bubble, so to speak, you know. Um, this fantasy, this dream that we all had felt kind of crushed. ECU graduates are encouraged to attend a virtual commencement ceremony today from their homes rather than walking across the stage to get their diplomas. When the online ceremony happened, we sat down in the living room at 10 a.m. Um, I was in, you know, gym shorts and a t-shirt and my cap and gown, everything, you know, full regalia and sitting there on my couch watching the commencement ceremony for about an hour. And I just went outside and popped a bottle of champagne. So that was my crossing the stage, I guess, in my backyard. Uh, it, it doesn't get any better than that, I guess. And then I got to meet the lady behind the at-home celebration, Mom. The energy was awesome in all of your videos. Are you, is that how it always is in your house? Oh, yes. 100%. Yes, yes. Yes. Rockford's mom, Katrina, told me about the legacy ECU has within their family. It started with Rockford's great grandfather. Then his nanny went there, Katrina's mother. He's her only grandson. She has three granddaughters in Rockford. He's the only boy in the family. Katrina says he calls him her special grandson, and the virtual graduation allowed her to see him on his special day. But to be honest with you, it is really probably better that it happened the way it did because I don't think my mother could have made it to the ceremony. So this way she really got to experience it with him. Rec also experienced something else quite unique. I mean, I, I graduated on Friday and then I had Saturday and Sunday to rest and then Monday I was off to work. He landed his first job during a pandemic. Finding a job during this time has really boosted my confidence, boosted my self-esteem and has really just made me feel so much more confident about my future. Rex says he follows strict procedures to ensure he doesn't bring COVID-19 home to his family, but is grateful, positive, and motivated to be a graduate of the class of 2020. But even without a job, I look back on all of the years that I've been at ECU for, you know, four years now. Having those memories of like my friends, the celebrations, the fun times, the work, all the memories that have uh, accumulated into basically my graduation, it's kind of added up into my graduation. So yes, I, I feel like I have graduated now. And as a pirate graduate myself, I helped make his dream a reality, virtually, with a lot less people. <laughs> Very, very sweet story. I followed up with Rockford Rec today. He actually wanted to be able to show a picture of his nanny graduating from ECU, but those photos were unfortunately lost in a fire. That means the photos you saw in this story mean that much more to this family. And I just want to say to the class of 2020, college or high school, congratulations. Live in Jacksonville, I'm Kayla Schmidt, nine on your side. What a great story, Kayla, thank you.